Oftentimes in programming, we want to actually repeat a process multiple times. And for those situations, there is the for loop. It's a very common tool in almost every language, and of course, Java has it as well. So let's say I have this array of ints, and I want to take each one of these particular numbers and convert them to a, a percentage uh, for test scores. Well, I can use a for loop to repeat the process for each element. So the way the for loop works is you type 4, and the first thing you need to do is you need to have an iterator. Um, this will be a, a variable that will kind of keep track of how many loops we're going to go over. So I'm just going to say int i, and I'm going to say its starting condition is at 0. What I want it to do is I want it to increment slowly, uh, and we're going to use i to represent where in this particular int array we are. So I want to do that until I get to the end of the array. Well, the second part of a for loop is where you describe the condition that will be tested for it to successfully loop over again. So in this case, I want that to continue to loop through it until I reach the end of test scores. So as long as this i is less than the actual length of that test score array, I'll be fine. Lastly, you want to describe in between each of these steps uh, what will happen to this letter i. In this case, I just want to increment it by 1. Now, we have our starting condition, which is 0, and then every time that this block of code executes, it's going to increment i to be one more than it was before, and it will do that until i is greater than the length of the array. We want At that point, we want it to stop. So using this, I can now say test scores at the position of i will equal test scores at position i times 100 out of, let's see, out of 67. And I'll just make this a little more clear like that. OK, so now what's going to happen is the first time this block of code executes, i, which is equal to 0, will be test scores 0, so element 57 and then it will run that code. And the next time it runs through, at the end of this block here, it's going to go back and say, OK, now i is equal to 1. And then the next time, it will be 2, and then 3. And then at that moment, this block of code is not going to run anymore, because this condition that we set up here will no longer be true. And that is how you can loop over sets of data without having to write a lot of code.